Hi, uh, I'm Frank and uh, I would like to do some videos about using Rust on ESP32 microcontrollers. Uh, I mainly aim for reg regular software developers like me uh, to, to get into uh, microcontrollers because it's quite nice and especially given now we have a language like Rust which is like a, a real modern language uh, that people like us, like uh, regular software engineers, can use embedded device as well. Uh, of course, you can always do that with something like in C or with Arduino, but for many that's just not a very uh, palatable language to do anything like an API or something like that. You, everybody knows it's theoretically possible, but also that, yeah, uh, that few people will actually want to do it. So, um, I will try to uh, keep the perspective uh, of the software developer. Uh, if you are embedded, you will probably uh, face palm a few times through those videos because I'm really not, that's not really my thing. Uh, it will be a pretty entry level, but I do recommend to, uh, if you, uh, to get into Rust and to get familiar with the tool set a little bit before you go into embedded because it, it adds another layer of um, difficulty. So, uh, yeah, first get uh, familiar with Rust, I would say, and then um, uh, add the extra layer of, of microcontrollers, which involves cross-compiling for to a different tech platform, uh, uh, to, to have the slightly weird uh, tool change, chains. So, uh, yeah, I will assume that you are somewhat familiar with Rust. Uh, so, starting with... Uh, with uh, um, the setup, I have a microcontroller here, I'll put it on the camera here. Uh, it has, uh, uh, you can see the, the, the headers and the chip. Something like this should cost you not much more than, um, than uh, 10 euros. The chip itself is much cheaper. It's a ESP32C3, which is a, a, a RISC-V processor. Uh, it has some, um, it has onboard Wi-Fi, which we will use. And uh, yeah, uh, you can uh, connect all everything you want basically to those headers. Um, but first, let's get uh, s let's set up our environment. I will probably need to uh, uh, fast forward a little bit a few times because uh, some of those builds are slow. So first of all, let's uh, we will use a template for it. Um, just doing cargo new and every and adding everything manually is really a very long process and now when i show you the result of the template you will probably understand why mm. so let's have a look i will uh, search for cargo template esp32 and that's a github repository uh, we will be using um, ESP IDF. IDF is a sort of uh, uh, real-time OS, which is not really an OS, but it's a, it gives you some tools to work with, uh, some some uh, uh, facilities, the, most of the standard library. And uh, know that you still don't have, really have an OS. You don't can do system calls all you want. Some of the some of them uh, you can work around, but. Uh, so yeah, um, let's start with uh, the software part first. Um, so this says this is how you generate uh, uh, a project. So here in my uh, folder, nothing here. Uh, let's just do this, and it says uh, uh, let's do ESP32 video as project name. It says, ask me which one, C3, I will want to do the advanced ones. Don't want Walkie, Walkie, which is kind of an online emulator, which is really nice, but I'm not going to use it now. 5.1 seems all right. Uh, enable standard support, yes, please. Uh, no dev containers. Uh, default features should be all right. So now we have a... Uh, a folder 
uh, and let's see what's in there. Cargo Tomo, uh, build RS, nothing should be super uh, unexpected. Uh, let's have a look at the cargo. And already you can see there is quite a lot in here. Uh, like the beginning, normal stuff, um, but uh, a bunch of dependencies, a bunch of versions, which is hard to get right uh, manually, I would say. Uh, so uh, let's um, run a cargo build. Now wait, before that, there is also a .cargo folder, which uh, has extra configuration options for, uh, for the cargo build. And if I show that one, it is config file in here, it configures the standard target. So every time I do a build now, this target will be uh, targeted. Uh, so it will be a, the RISC-V processor and it will be using the EDF uh, on top of the uh, real-time OS. So, um, yeah, let me uh, go back and I do, a, I will probably need to fast forward it because that really takes a while. Cargo build. Okay, so uh, it did take quite a while. It didn't really say, I think it was like four minutes or something like that, uh, but it actually failed. Uh, and it says like uh, something pretty uh, down in the weeds about Wi-Fi that seems to have a missing, um, missing field. Uh, this happens from time to time that something breaks, that there is something updated and uh, the matching update haven't been made yet. Uh, or I already uh, ran into this one before. Um, uh, it has been fixed already on the master, so I can make a, um, a, a fix on the... I make a patch on the cargo and then uh, um, we can... Uh, uh, use the master version and then it should be all right. But first let's set up our uh, uh, our uh, developer environment. So that will be something like I'm using VS Code. I'm going to open in this environment. And that will also take a while probably the moment I touch your Rust file. Make sure you have the uh, Rust Analytics uh, uh, integration enabled uh, because otherwise you will not have any help and that's really essential i think uh, so looking at the main function here uh, not exciting the link patches something that you apparently have to do uh, and uh, in initialize logging fine and print hello world so uh, yeah that's uh, that's it so that's not super impressive but that's what you want from a Hello world. Now, this took quite long, uh, mostly because it was downloading a lot of the the, the sources, uh, or, or not so much the sources, like the build environment. And then, given uh, that we are not really installing it onto an operating system, like everything that needs to be there, it needs to include in the binary. So, it does a lot more than. Uh, uh, compiling this single function. So that's why it can take a while. Because if I go back to the terminal, uh, if I show the size of the folders, like uh, uh, like the, tar the target is pretty big, it's one gigabyte. And uh, the M build, so that's kind of the build environment for ESP IDF, it's nearly two gigabytes. So th there is a, uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. It's not that it's just very slow, and but it is built on Python, so maybe. Um, so this kind of seems to uh, at least work well enough for the editor to work, but there is a problem that we need to address with the Wi-Fi integration thingy. Um, so just to help it troubleshooting, 
Oh, I, I, I cleared it. Um, we need to patch the the cargo tunnel, uh, and we can do that by adding a patch section and then saying that a certain uh, uh, dependency, in this case ESP IEF service, we will point to uh, a Git repository instead. Let me um, look that up. I will go to my own uh, GitHub. My repositories, because I had exact same thing. Um, I'm not going through the entire troubleshooting uh, phase here, but let's have a look. And the way it looks like is um, you can add a patch. And this is the one I'm talking about. I don't think we have any patches here. Um, yeah, so we just want to add this one. I'll copy them all and then I remove the other ones. So let's do it here, I suppose. These I don't need just this one so now instead of the the one on on crates.io it will use the one the, the github master of that one so let's see if we can do the build we did before and see if it works this time it shouldn't take as long of course cool so now it works um also i've kind of forgot to mention uh, on the template there are a bunch of things you need to have installed before on the prerequisites. Basically those. Uh, so uh, I obviously have them all installed. Um, but uh, yeah, you need to do that first. So uh, to run it now, I can do cargo ESP flash. So, oh no, first I need to connect it, of course. Uh, let me switch again on my desk camera and this is that uh, uh, controller I have a USB cable this USB E I plug into my uh, dongle and the other side is a micro USB for these ones I plug it in and you see on the LED that it's powered up now then um, let's uh, run cargo ESP flash that will flash it and dash dash monitor will when it has flashed it will connect the serial port so you can see output output all right so let's go it will ask for a port so it already detected that it's uh, there I take the default and now it starts uploading again it will take a while not, not as bad And uh, once it is uploaded, it will start the binary and it will log. And, and, and in this case, the log is kind of essential because the only thing this program does is log, uh, log the hello world line. So, uh, yeah, we, it's, uh, if you don't see that, uh, there's absolutely nothing happening. So, here you see, this is the line we were looking for hello world and then it just returned from the app so that's uh, on one hand unimpressive but on the other hand it was pretty straightforward until now uh, all right uh, that's all for this one uh, i'll follow up too